One minute ago, the Philippine crust shifted, measurably, under the weight of a magnitude 6.9 quake. All sensors confirm. Stress is building along the Philippine Fault, a 1,200 kilometer line that has split land before. Over years, or minutes, this system can tear valleys open, sever roads, and reshape coastlines. So what does it mean when stress is rising right now, and how close are we to another major rupture? At 21.59 local time, the seismic dashboard flashes red, magnitude 6.9, depth 17 kilometers, epicenter just offshore from Bogo City. Fivio LCS and USGS event maps align within minutes, both pinpointing the same rupture zone. The aftershock count spikes, over 3,000 in the first week, each plotted in real time, their depths stacking along the newly named Bogo Bay Fault. Space-based sensors deliver the next confirmation. Sentinel-1 and ALOS-2 satellites sweep the region, capturing before and after images. Their interferograms reveal the crust's movement. Bands of color show permanent shifts, some zones displaced by up to 36 millimeters. These patterns match the ground-based GNSS stations, where GPS logs capture a sharp step, 34 millimeters of horizontal shift recorded at one site. The data from space and ground agree within two millimeters, confirming that the land itself has moved. A lead GNNS, SI, NSAR analyst at UP Diliman describes the process. We process satellite passes and ground logs side by side. When the offsets match, we know the rupture is real, not noise. Their team posts the first displacement map within 18 hours, labeling every station, every centimeter. A quad split montage runs. Shake map intensity, FIVO LCS ground shaking, GNSS displacement, INSAR fringes. Each system, independent but all showing the same story, stress has released along a locked fault and the crust has shifted for good. On screen, a simple card defines the Philippine Fault Zone, a 1200 kilometer strike slip fault slicing through the archipelago, responsible for many of the country's largest earthquakes. Over time, it offsets land by meters each event, kilometers over centuries. Every sensor, ground, space, and seismic confirms the displacement locking in the reality of the rupture. The numbers are not abstract, they are the measured scars of a living fault system. A street in Bislig City, October 10th, 9.50 a.m. local time is stamped on the corner of the frame. Power lines sway in the background as a group of residents gathers outside a shuttered pharmacy. The ground beneath them is cracked a white crosswalk now jagged and uneven. A sign for the Jolly Bee Rotunda anchors the location. For many here, the first sign was a low rumble, then windows rattled and the asphalt shifted under their feet. Some recall the sudden darkness as power failed, others remember the sound of concrete splitting. In the days since, local officials have counted over 3,000 aftershocks across the region. Each new tremor brings a fresh wave of anxiety, especially for families whose homes sit near visible fault traces. The scars left behind are not just numbers on a dashboard. On the outskirts of Bogo City, a fence now stands offset by several centimeters, uh, its post no longer aligned. In San Remigio, a rice paddy is sliced by a narrow, muddy trench that didn't exist a week before. These ground level breaks are the surface expression of deep fault slip. For those living above the rupture, the landscape itself has changed. Roads, once straight, now bend abruptly. Concrete steps up or down where the earth has shifted sideways, sometimes by the width of a hand. This isn't the first time the Philippines has witnessed such transformation. In July 1990, the Luzon earthquake tore a 6-meter offset through the heart of Nueva Ecija. Archival photographs from that year show a national highway sheared clean in two, a bridge deck left hanging in space, irrigation canal snapped and misaligned. Residents then describe the ground opening like a zipper, with houses and fields torn along the line of the Philippine fault zone. The memory of that event lives on not just in pictures, but in the shape of the land itself, long linear scars that can still be traced today. 
the pattern repeats. Surface rupture, visible displacement, and a community forced to adapt. Every new earthquake brings its own signature, but the mechanism is the same. A locked fault gives way, and the earth splits along a plane mapped by scientists and remembered by those who live through it. The time scale is geologic, but the impact is immediate. For families in Bogo, Beeslig, and San Remigio, the meaning of a split is not abstract. It is something they can see, touch, and measure in the altered paths of their daily lives. On the latest stress map, a red patch sits just south of the main rupture. Coulomb stress has increased by 0.13 bar along the northern Leyte segment of the Philippine fault zone. In simple terms, Coulomb stress is how pressure released on one fault can nudge nearby faults closer to slipping. Scientists track these changes because a rise above 0.1 bar can mean a higher chance of aftershocks or even another rupture nearby. But the numbers tell a cautious story. Most aftershocks are already following Amori's law. A sharp spike after the main quake, then a steady drop in frequency. The aftershock curve, plotted from the first hour, now bends downward. This pattern is typical after a large strike-slip event. Each day brings fewer tremors and most are too small to be felt. The risk isn't gone, but for now, the odds favor decay rather than escalation. Still, the outlook isn't just about statistics. Local governments aren't waiting for the all clear. In Bogo and San Remigio, emergency teams are out with engineers and geologists inspecting bridges, schools, and hillside roads. The head of incident response in San Remigio puts it plainly, we check every structure with cracks or offsets. If the aftershocks weaken a bridge, we close it. If a school has visible damage, classes stay suspended until we're sure it's safe. This approach comes from experience. The stress map may show where the crust is loaded, but it's the ground reports that decide which roads reopen and which neighborhoods need extra watch. The science points to gradual calming, yet a patch of raised stress lingers along the fault's southern extension. That's why officials keep a close eye on the data, ready to act if the numbers shift again. For now, vigilance is the rule, backed by both the model and the memory of how quickly the situation can change. A sudden cluster of shallow aftershocks, especially if they migrate toward a new segment of the Philippine fault zone, can signal that stress is transferring. Scientists check the GNNSS and INSAR data daily, watching for fresh offsets. Any new jump in ground position, even by a few millimeters, is logged and compared against satellite passes. If these shifts line up with a growing aftershock swarm, the risk for a triggered slip on an adjacent fault rises. This is not speculation. It's the same pattern seen before the 2013 Bahal earthquake and in the days leading up to the 1990 Luzon rupture. When the stress map lights up in red along a neighboring fault, engineers and local officials know what's at stake. In these moments, the focus turns to bridges, schools, and utilities sitting above or near the mapped line. A triggered slip here could mean new surface rupture, cracked roads, offset fences, and possibly more evacuations. The window for this scenario stretches over weeks to months. During this time, monitoring teams keep a close cadence. GMNSS logs are checked at least once a day. INSAR scenes are processed as soon as satellites fly over. And field teams share updates with PATEHIVOLCS in real time. For the rare but most serious scenario, attention shifts offshore. If a mega thrust earthquake were to rupture along the Manila or Philippine Trench, the consequences could be severe. Strong shaking across a wide area and the potential for a tsunami. No data right now suggests this is imminent, but the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center is the official source for any alert. Their bulletins appear within minutes of a large offshore event and tide gauges across the region are checked for abnormal sea level changes. 
To stay ahead of the risk, follow verified bulletins from PHIVOLCS and PTWC. For ongoing updates, subscribe and tap like. Let's keep going. At 2159 Philippine time, a magnitude 6.9 earthquake struck at a depth of 22 kilometers, confirmed by PHYVOLCS, USGS, and GNSS I NSAR systems. Satellite measurements show up to 34 millimeters of surface shift, echoing historic events like the 6 meter offset along the Philippine fault zone in 1990. Over 1,200 kilometers, this fault has shaped valleys, displaced roads, and defined the landscape through cumulative movement. Scientists have mapped a plus 0.13 bar stress increase near the activated segment, but the exact timing and location of future ruptures remain unknown. While most aftershocks decay within days, the risk of triggered slips or rare mega thrust events cannot be fully ruled out. Official bulletins from PHYVOLCS and PTWC guide public safety as monitoring continues. The evidence is clear. Earthquakes reshape the Philippines gradually, not all at once. What cannot be predicted is the precise moment or scale of the next major shift. For now, preparation and vigilance remain the strongest tools against a landscape where the ground keeps moving.